Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In the previous episode, I tried to get a probe over to Mars slash Duna, and it's there, it's just not operating the way I intended it to. And so I've added the Remote Tech module to the probe core that I used on that. So now, uh, uh, not on that craft though, I don't edit the persistence file, but we will relaunch with uh, another craft. And the reason I didn't edit the persistence file is also because that probe should have run out of electric charge. So it's pointless anyway. Uh, it shouldn't be able to do science there because it wouldn't have had electric charge. So I've rebuilt the probe a bit uh, with, uh, with the remote tech module installed and also more solar panels. But for now I need to figure out about transfer times. And so happens that the ratio between the orbits in the solar system is very similar to that of the Kerbal system and as a result uh, the phase angles that you would normally wait for for the Kerbal system are similar to those for the solar system and so right now we're not really in a transfer time period for Eve or Duna and uh, Eve or Duna Venus or Mars for Jupiter, though, we're about right. I mean, uh, it should be 97 degrees. However, I've uh, noted that, uh, by my calculations, the delta V to get to Jupiter, the round trip uh, cost, that's the easy one. It's easier to calculate the round trip cost for delta V. And the round trip cost is about 14,400 delta V. And... So basically for to get over there, it would probably cost about 8,000. It's usually more to get out than to come back in. So we don't have that on our probe. Really the only possible destinations for us are uh, Venus and Mars. So I'm going to time warp and see which one we get first. Remember we don't have any assets in orbit or anything. Uh, well, we have assets in orbit. We don't have anything that's time critical. So. Um, so Venus has to be 55 degrees behind us and Mars has to be 45 degrees ahead of us and so we'll just see which happens first and the name for that it's gotta be close maybe we should launch both wow <laughs> it looks like it's gotta be almost both of them at the same time hmm No, uh, it's it's uh, Mars first, but I think we should before the Mars mission gets there. I think we should also attempt to launch at Duna. Not Duna, uh, Eve. Sheesh. Too many planet names. Okay, yeah, this this looks good for the Mars mission, and then uh, perhaps in a few days we'll be launching to Eve as well. Okay, so let's go to the VAB this time and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so here at the top of the Magni Launcher, we now have a different set of AIES panels. We have these SunCat 1 panels, which produce 6.6 .6 per minute, uh, instead of, uh, it was... I... Which one was it? I think it was... No, it didn't look like that. That is these, 3.8 per minute, yeah. I used uh, four of these, 3.8 per minute, and instead I'm using these, the 6.6 .6 per minute. However, there is the, the downside that these do not track the sun, right? So they have to be pointed in the right direction, they don't uh, turn. Uh, so I do have doubled the number of the default ones, just in case these solar panel rays, these do track the sun. And so just in case I've got those, I've even got more of the panels that are always open. So definitely retrofitted this quite a lot. And let me just check my action groups for a sec. Uh, it looks like I've got all of these and these opening at the same time. I'm going to change that. I'm going to get these on action group 3 because they don't particularly look photogenic when they are extended they form an X of sorts so don't look the best but in an emergency they'll be helpful 
Okay, so here we are with the Mars 1A and the launcher. And so, first things first, let's target the moon as a reference for the inclination for the rest of the solar system. And if I can find it, yep, set us target. So, relative inclination 21.7. I really hope that we're not in the dark again. Um, in theory, there are some times when the inclination is right when we might be in the light. I hope this is one of those times. Okay, I think that's okay. Let's see. No such luck. Nighttime. Well, if it has to be nighttime, uh, how close are we to the. No, we're we're in the dead of night here. Oh well. Uh, why is my throttle not going to the top? Come on, throttle. All right. And yeah. Who sort of feeling a little bit fuzzy today? But let's let's try this. Hope everything is all ship shape and kosher. And launch. <sighs> so, in other news about what I'm doing off to the side, I have, uh, I've been looking into doing a sort of Apollo tribute in time for the Apollo 11 anniversary but I'm debating about exactly how to do it either I'm going to do it with um, you know building my own and uh, doing procedural parts I'll be using procedural parts for it or I'm going to use the FASA uh, Saturn package which of course it's much more realistic and um, and that would look a lot better the FASA package is probably going to give me some staging trouble. I'll have to figure all that out. I've, I've managed to... So it'll be real solar system, obviously. Uh, and I've managed to at least put the craft together in real solar system. There isn't a pre-made pre craft file for it with, real, uh, with all the parts resized for real solar system. So you have to figure out how to put it together. Not that hard, but... But now I have to test that. Uh, to if you guys, it'd be interesting to see what you think about whether we would want the very realistic looking Saturn V uh, with FASA or whether it would be preferable to sort of build my own using procedural parts and uh, real engines and all of that and just uh, try our best to come as close as possible. Obviously the capsule and the Lander, the lander especially would not look anything like it. So that's that's the big problem. The lander would not look the same at all. Okay, we have passed Mach 1. We are looking at everything nominal here. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. Okay. And booster separation is good. We are a little bit below our desired pitch here. And yeah, the fairings are in the wrong place. Okay, but not time to drop the fairings just yet. We'll try and pass 70k before that. I really do need to figure out what the proper inclination to 
Mars is instead of just uh, I guess I don't know if there'll always be a two degree discrepancy between the moon and Mars or whether there's some way of figuring that out it also depends on where their apoapsis and periapses are so it's a bit more complicated than just saying uh, the moon is at this inclination and Mars is at that inclination and that's you just subtract the two or anything like that uh, it depends on the ac actual orientation of the tilt if you will Okay, I think uh, payload fairing separation now. If it'll let me. There we go. And I'll extend the critical antenna. The AIES antenna that is now basically the new communitron. <laughs> it's, it's taken the place of all the communitrons. Okay. Okay. First stage separation is good. And the second stage is lit. bit of a orientation wiggle here but I think the the gimbling on the engine should be able to handle it okay we're getting close to where we're gonna need to shut this down and I'm actually pointing a little bit below the horizon right now because we're a little bit too far away from apoapsis to do anything else. And I'll shut down here. Uh, so let's call it 280 by 220. And with about 700 delta V left in the second stage. Quite a lot. So we could probably loft a larger third stage or a larger payload if necessary. But no need to worry about that right now. I, I don't think there's anything missing in the in the payload so I don't know why it should be a problem not even why it's not a problem uh, why it should be different okay so well we, we can do second stage separation here uh, though it's in the dark uh, let's turn smart ASS off turn SAS on and then off it goes. Okay, that's good. Now, now we plot for Mars. Okay. Periapsis 253 kilometers, if we can get this right. Sounds good to me. Time to get those solar panels out. Okay. Oh no, we need to make sure we actually orient properly. Uh, I guess we need to get our CS on. Otherwise, this might have even more trouble than usual getting fuel flow stable. You know, we might have enough Delta V to get to Jupiter. That's, that's quite a lot, 9,700. I didn't think it was that much for this vehicle. Okay, let's see now. Fuel flow unstable. So, we're going to need 
one set of Ullage Rockets. Uh, come on. Alright. Are we ready? Not quite. Okay. Alright. Off we go. See, so, yeah, I think somebody asked in the comments whether Engine Igniter is a thing. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, we've only got eight Ignites on this uh, RL-10B2, and practically speaking, we, we'll only use two of those. It'll be hard to use more than that. At this point, I'm going to take a smart ASS off and use SAS instead. And that's because the maneuver node may wander and I don't want smart ASS following it. Okay, we're uh, coming up on the last 30 seconds or so of the burn. Everything seems to be going okay, though we did execute the burn a little bit late. It definitely looks like that now. Okay. This is gonna be tight. Practically no time delay because we're currently over Cape Canaveral or thereabouts. Okay, I'm gonna settle it there. Give that the check mark and see how far off we are. Just that with the mid course plane change. Pretty far off, but. Okay. So, uh, a little bit more of a mid course burn, but uh, we've restored our intended periapsis, so no problem there. Probably will need to do a little bit more air braking than usual because our orbit isn't quite matching. Now, we're not quite hitting Mars at the right time. We really should be hitting it at our uh, solar apoapsis but uh, not quite there, but uh, that, that should be fine. I still haven't quite gotten the right air braking altitude for Mars yet, but, but this is all experimentation, and again, that part of it is, uh, is not critical, because we'll have done the experiments by then. Okay, now, this is on an outward bound trajectory, and in fact, uh, let's get it into a heliocentric orbit before we continue. And yeah. And then we'll launch the Venus mission. Uh, we'll have to get that at the right time. Okay. Weird pause there. But I think that shouldn't be a problem. Oh 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 oh. We we are. Um, I forgot to uh, activate the main antenna. Uh, target. Yeah, activate. Wow, that would have been bad. Uh, I think we just got very lucky.
What are we? What we were were we connected to before I turned on the main antenna? I have no idea. I hope I configured the remote tech correctly. Why are these two <laughs> sticking out? Okay, fine, fine. If uh, if those two are gonna stick out, then let's get the other two out too. Clearly, I've done some incorrect action grouping here. Okay, continuing on to heliocentric orbit. I should probably turn RCS off. Okay, I don't think it accepted that signal. There we go. Okay, we are now in orbit around the sun with this mission. And I'm gonna try and time it for the Venus launch. So, let's see. Okay, does that look like 55, 54 degrees really? Uh, 54 degrees... No, that looks like about a little bit more than 60 actually. I'm not using a protractor to the screen this time. Just trying to estimate my angles. That doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I'm gonna call that close enough. Okay, so with this mission on its way, let's uh, go back to the VAB, rename the satellite, and then launch a mission to Venus. You know, it just occurred to me, uh, I should check whether there's a core that is meant for EVE. We've got some science points, and if there is one, maybe I can unlock it. Otherwise, this core doesn't have the EVE experiments, and therefore not the Venus experiments. So let me go to the R&D center first and check whether we need to get a new core for this. Okay, so here we are in the R&D center, and we've got 700 points, so that's quite a lot. Uh, if we take a look at where the cores are, here's where we got the high orbital pass of Duna. Doesn't say anything about this one, but if we've got a Eve core, it would be around here, I guess. Doesn't say anything there. Now the upgraded version, the new version of realistic regression light, will would have would have uh, better coverage of all the planets, I think if I recall correctly. But I don't think this version does. So I'm not seeing any Eve core, so I think we're safe. And that's sort of a relief because even if I did unlock an Eve core, I wouldn't be sure whether it's configured for remote tech correctly don't have enough uh, science to unlock this science junior uh, nor any of the other things so alright back to the VAB so I'm not gonna make any changes to probe except to say Venus 1 and everything should be alright uh, except this time I should remember to turn on my main dish before attempting to leave the system. So let's take it out to the launch pad. So here we go again and setting the target as the moon and we're probably gonna be in the dark. 
I mean, almost certainly, because we're just launching the next day, after all. So, the relative position of the Moon, Earth, and Sun should not be too different. Oh, and before anybody comes up with a suggestion on how it happened, I'm pretty sure that what happened with our communication with the Mars 1A was the equation that uh, gets you the range uh, means that the powerful dish on Pratchett Station, which is tuned to active vessel, I think it's tuned to active vessel, uh, either that or moon, but I, I think it was tuned to active vessel. Uh, anyway, uh, that dish, uh, when combined with the puny little antenna on the on the probe, the Mars 1A, gave sufficient range. Uh, based on the equation, uh, which which is sort of a distance equation, it's like Pythagorean uh, theorem, you know, uh, uh, square root of the squares summed. So, so yeah, I think that's what happened. Okay. I think we're ready to go. It is, of course, in the dark. And again, I haven't put lights on the exterior of this because, uh, first of all, I don't have the B, uh, the Streamline B9 lights, which are meant for aircraft. Uh, those would be better. And, uh, and the lights that we do have uh, tend to stick out, and I don't like that. And I'm worried about my aerodynamic effects and whether things will fall off or anything like that. So I'm leaving them off for now. All right, I think we're ready to light this and just checking that I'm not wrong that we are ready to go for Venus. Yeah, it looks good to me. All right, here we go. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. Okay, boosters are out. And boosters are off. The mission continues. Really got to remember to fix the fairing staging here. Okay, music kicks in and we're go going for fairing separation. Pale of fairing. Come on, is off, extending the AIES antenna, and before I forget, activating also the main dish, targeting Kerbin. Now, judging from the previous launch, it seems like we could flatten out a little bit earlier. And that will avoid the way we had to actually p go into negative pitch late in the burn. So I'm going to try that out. I'm going to try pitching a little bit lower, closer to the prograde vector. Okay, first stage is out.
And the second stage is lit. We continue on. Okay. Looks like we're in line for a much more restrained orbit this time. Just give it a little bit more pitch to it. Okay, pretty good. 222 by 205. All right, so that's good. 781 meters per second left on this stage. And without further ado, let's uh, separate it. All right. So that's all nice and neat. And let's plot for a Venus transfer. First time for that. Might be a little bit early, we'll see. Because Venus is going around the Sun a little bit faster, it's a little bit more finicky trying to plot. And for those of you who have played stock, you know that from trying to plot Moho and Eve transfers, it's a little bit trickier. Uh-oh, we've got a moon encounter there. That could be interesting. Looks like it's far enough away that the moon's not going to give us too much of a problem, but we'll have to see. Set us target. It might obscure any attempt at finding out what our resulting orbit is, though. That's... that's a problem. How far away are we? Okay, that gets rid of that. But how far off are we from... Oh, not bad. Okay. So we can... Let's continue in this vein. Uh, quite a lot of uh, adjustment needed. 3.4 degrees. And that's going to cost a lot more because we're closer to the sun there. Okay, I think I'm going to take uh, Eve Periapsis of 1739 for now. That seems reasonable. The mid-course plane change is 1,800, and that's because we are more than 3 degrees off, so it's bound to be costly. Though we have that delta V at our disposal, so I'm not too worried about that. So I think I think we're good. Let's have smart ASS point at the node. Oh yes, uh, this needs RCS. Can't just do it with uh, reaction wheel control because there are no reaction wheels. Okay, and just preemptively I'm going to extend solar panels. And for some reason, the only one I didn't action group to two was this one. So, might as well just get that out now. Is it just me, or is this smart ASS really not good at controlling things right now? Okay, I think we're we're about at the right point for our the star of our burn, judging from the previous one, and very unstable, so we're going to need to use the rockets to settle it down here. Alright, RCS is on. I guess that's that's fine. Alright, uh, let's keep the display up. and. Okay. 
we are successfully lit on the third stage. Burn time estimated to be 13 minutes, so good thing we started now. We might end up dipping pretty close to the atmosphere, unfortunately. Let's try to avoid that. Got to take Smart ASS off and SAS on. And long burn ahead of us, so I'll catch you at the other end of it. Okay, so about a minute left in our burn time, but I just realized that uh, it could be trickier than I have anticipated because of the moon encounter. You can see that the moon, it doesn't change our inclination, and that's good, but it does tra change our trajectory a little bit. And I'm worried that if this doesn't occur precisely, that we'll have a pretty big deviation. We might actually crash into the moon. So, gotta keep an eye out for that. We are currently over Western Australia. And we are getting ready to... Uh, yeah, the moon's already starting to interfere here. For those who uh, aren't familiar with uh, Realism Overhaul that much, the engine is just on or off. There is no throttling on this particular engine, this uh, RL10B4. So I don't get to just sort of nudge it close to the... And of course restarting the engine takes uh, a little bit of liquid fuel and oxidizer and also relies on the fuel flow to be settled. So it's a little bit more complicated than might at first appear. Oh wow, are we going to get anything close to the trajectory that I was planning? Okay, it looks like it's going to flip around. Crash and... back up again. Alright, at least we have a periapsis around the moon. Let's try and get as far away from it as possible, but I don't think we can deviate too far. Okay, let's see now. 6,000 kilometers is pretty close. There's a chance I can relight the engine without settling the fuel flow down right now if I want to. So let's see. I think, I mean, we've got a Eve Periapsis here, so maybe I just don't need to worry about that right now. Of course, we've got plenty of Delta V in the stage that will all go away by the time we get to this maneuver might be helpful to fix things now but I think it'll be easier to do it out here anyway it's a little bit too unpredictable with the moon messing around with us looks like we can actually crash into Venus if we wanted to but Let's avoid that for now. We've got an uh, Eve slash Venus periapsis here. It will cost us 1,800, but we have that. Uh, much more than that, in fact. So, let us also get this mission out into heliocentric orbit. Double check that this dish is okay. Yeah. All right. And we're actually headed this way. We'll let we'll have to be careful about the moon flyby. Just can't time warp uh, through those two points. 
that Mark D encounter. Okay, temporary loss of connection as we enter the Moon Sphere of Influence. Let's take a look and see if we can spot the spot the moon. Look, uh, there it is. Okay. Wave to all our assets around the moon. And we continue. And this is us in heliocentric orbit. Now on our way to Venus. Not quite though, we still have the mid-course plane change to do for both flights, uh, so both the Mars mission and the Venus mission will have to be adjusted. The Venus mission looks to be in 78 days and uh, 133 days before encounter. Let's switch to the other mission to see what's going on with it. And so with this mission, and let's just check that everything is alright, approximately so. And our plan maneuver here will be in 73 days. So actually this, this maneuver is coming first. And But the encounter with the planet, with Mars, will be in 170 days. So the order of operations is this maneuver first, then the Venus maneuver, Venus uh, encounter and then the Mars encounter and I think we'll have to take care of that in the next episode so tune in to find out how these two missions actually fare and what kind of science they bring back to uh, to our space program alright thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time